Good morning, team. It's Tuesday, August 31st, the last day of August. I know it's hard to believe. I'm Amy Kaur, and I'm joined by Kevin Van Eck, and we are live out of the Goose Island office. So we wanted to take a deeper dive today into the subtle shift we are seeing in this real estate market. So make sure to grab your coffee, your tea, power smoothie, lemon water, or Diet Coke, and let's get rolling with our next episode of Coffee with Amy and Kevin. That's right. Good morning, Amy. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. I've got my coffee. Make sure you have one of the drinks that Amy mentioned. Today is exciting. We're going to take a deeper dive into what Jim and Trisha, our guest hosts, while we were gone on vacation a few weeks ago, talked about when it came to the pivot that we're seeing that's happening this summer, where buyers maybe took a breath because they were feeling a little bit exhausted, and sellers across the board were not necessarily seeing the velocity or number of multiple offers or multiple bid situations that we had seen earlier in the year. So we're going to talk about effective communication and setting expectations during this time when there is this pivot, when there is a transition in the market, because it's really important that we understand what's happening in the market and we can communicate it and set expectations at the very beginning of the relationship we have with our buyers and sellers. Yeah, thanks, Kevin. So the first thing that I want to kick off with this morning is that all important word, communication, because this is really pivotal when it comes to all things related to our clients. And let's face it, over the last 16, 18 months, this market has been really crazy. So in a lot of ways, we've been communicating with our clients rapidly all of the time, multiple offers, things moving quickly. There was a lot to communicate about. But now with just this slight subtle shift in the market. And here's the thing, we may not be feeling it in every single market, but we are seeing a little bit of a slowdown in different pockets. And so what we need to start thinking about is our communication with our clients. Because as the market changed and sellers had expectations that their homes were going to sell in a matter of hours or even just a few days, or they were going to be receiving offers over asking price or multiple offers, we're seeing some of that slowing down right now. So this is going to make sellers a little bit nervous. And so we need to start thinking about our communication. How are we communicating with our clients? How frequently? And are we setting the right expectation when it comes to communicating with them? So I want to actually take us back to fall 2018, where we actually did a really great listing retention workshop. And one of the things we focused on was communication. One of the big things that came out of that class was the idea of always being a step ahead of your clients and making sure that you're guiding them through the the process. So you need to be making sure that you're communicating with your sellers and your buyers in this market right now about what's happening. And specifically for your sellers, if there is a slowdown and maybe they are not getting as many showings as are being expected out of the gates, or it's taking longer for things to happen, I think it's really important for us to make sure that we've got our communication intact. So I want you to think about the two tools that we gave you during that listing retention workshop. The first was the idea of having a weekly communication plan. That was usually either picking a Monday or a Friday to have a set time where you pick up the phone and you connect with your seller and you check in and you tell them what happened during the week or what the plan is for that week moving forward. By doing that, it sets the tone and it allows you to have real dialogue with your client about what's happening in the market. The second thing that we offered up to you was a 30-day communication plan. And I know for some, it might be shocking to think I'm going to be having to communicate with my seller every 30 days, given this market. The reality is that it's a possibility. There might be some clients or some sellers where their pocket of the market is slowing down and you might need to reconnect every 30 days. It might only be you know, the first 30 and then into 60, but be prepared because you want to make sure that if if your listings are staying on the market a little bit longer than we've seen over the past 18 months, that you're prepared with the right information for your client. 
Remember all the things that you're doing for them, the amazing uh, photos that you're creating, the video that you are doing, the brochures you've created, all of the print and digital ads that you are planning or have done in order to create exposure for them. It's really important for them to remember all that you're doing. And it's also really great for you to be able to say after 30 days, hey, here's the activity we've gotten. Here's the feedback we're getting. And based off of this, this is my recommendation on how we need to move forward. By you setting the expectation with a client that they're going to hear from you first every week, but that at every 30 days, if it's needed, you are going to have a strategy meeting. That's going to allow them to have great confidence in you and your abilities. So this may not happen for every seller, but I want you to dust off the listing retention class. Check it out in Ad Academy. We will send you with this video the links to the two documents that show you examples of a weekly communication plan and a 30-day communication plan. Those are things that you can send ahead of the conversation that you're going to have with your clients. But remember, even in this market, it's important for you to be the expert and for you to make sure that you are one step ahead of your client and any of the questions, concerns, or things that they might be thinking about. That's so great, Amy. Yeah, communication is top, right? Because whether it was when we were both working with clients and selling or as managing brokers in the past, I think it's fair to say that so many of the issues that came up were due to a lack of communication. So really, really great points there. Let's talk about data now. So we talked about, you know, being able to communicate, but what are we communicating? So this plays into that 30 and uh, 30 day and weekly communication plan, the data we use to show. So a couple of weeks ago, Jim and Trisha showed uh, a couple of graphs. One was inventory or number of homes for sale. And the second was under contract, the number of properties going under contract. And what those graphs showed was that there was a shift a shift going on in the market. There were more properties coming on to the market and there were fewer properties going under contract. Now let's talk about data. The hard part about data in our market is that it is historical. It's just like an appraisal or when we get a quarterly report on what happened over the last three months. It's historical, it does not indicate what is actually happening today. And we may not know what is happening today in a data format for another 30, 60 or 90 days. So the charts that Jim and Trisha showed are really important to use. We need to use data, but not all of the charts, especially depending on your market and what's happening, will tell the story that you're feeling, the story that your other clients are experiencing. Those charts that you pull may still show favorable conditions. It may still show an upward rise in number of contracts a downward trend in days on market. It may show still that month supply of inventory is low, depending on your market, depending when you pull it and depending what's actually happening today. So how can we combat the data if the data isn't telling the story we feel? Well, that's the key, tell the story. We need to become good storytellers. So data is great because it is firm, it is concrete. You cannot argue with it. So that's great to show. But storytelling allows people to connect with you, connect with the story, and then determine whether or not they want to be in the story you're talking about. So when we talk about storytelling, come up with a few stories based on the sellers or buyers you're working with now or have recently. And if you don't have any stories, reach out to a colleague, talk in your office. If you have office meetings, if you have small groups or accountability groups, share stories. And there's two types of stories you want to share. The first is a cautionary tale. As much as we know the market's been flying, as much as we know that now it's settling and there are still properties with multiple offers, there are still properties uh, that are moving quickly. We know that there are cautionary tales out there where a seller is pushing the limits, where it's still on the market and they might even be taking a price reduction. So here, use active listings to tell a story, whether it's that cautionary tale or the second type, which is the win. A story where a seller went on the market, they priced it correctly for what's happening in the shift and what we're feeling, and they won. We need to be able to tell stories so that our sellers can pick and choose how they're going to position their property in the market, not necessarily based only on the data, but based on the shift we're feeling today. And remember one thing from Trisha and Jim's episode a couple of weeks ago, Trisha said, 
that the closed properties have already incorporated any appreciation that's happened in the market. So for example, 10% in Chicago land, 31.2% in Detroit, 18.6% in Indy, and 12.3% appreciation over the last 12 months in Dallas. All of that's already being shown. So we're, we can't bump up another 10, 12, 18, or 32 percent. Sellers need to be looking to price at the market and not push beyond the appreciation limits. And your storytelling and the data you show will help them make a smart decision to get them to where they want to go on time. Great advice, Kevin. And the use of storytelling kind of leads right into this next topic that I want to cover, and that is setting expectations. And I'm a big believer that the best time to set expectations is before anything happens. So think about it. When you are sitting down with a seller or even with a buyer, if you talk about all of the things that could happen when you're listing their home or when you're getting them into your car and driving them around and finding them a house, if you talk about all of the scenarios before they happen, you can have a rational conversation. You can set up all of the different potential stories of what might happen when they are out there selling their home or trying to buy one. And the reason why this is so important is because once they're actually selling their home or once they're actually ready to buy something, emotion comes into play. And if you haven't set the right expectations before the emotion triggers, you can run into issues. So you want to be able to set the expectation. And to Kevin's point, use storytelling, use good examples of successful outcomes in the market by people taking the right steps when it comes to listing their home at the right price. Or you can also use the cautionary tales to set expectations by using examples of sellers who were over ambitious and got out of the gates way too high, listing their property for too much, and then having to reduce in this market. You know, reducing your price and making price adjustments, even in a fast moving market, can have some negative impact on the total outcome. So the other reason why setting expectations and talking about things before they happen is so critical is that when they do, you look like an absolute expert because when that scenario happens, whether it's good or bad, you're going to be able to say, hey, remember when we first sat down and we talked about the possibility of this happening? Well, it's happening now. And let's talk about what we agreed upon and how we're going to handle it in order to move forward. So you can use this as it pertains to pricing a property. And you can also use it for buyers' expectations when they are thinking about wanting to negotiate with a seller if they really have to go in strong and pay at full price or over ask. If you set those expectations ahead of time, it makes it easier when the scenario happens. And I want to use one example. I recently was talking with an agent and she explained how she was sitting down with clients of hers who were sellers and they sat down in April. And they looked at the market in April. They looked at the data. They looked at how quickly homes were selling. And they decided to come up with a strategy right then and there. So in April, they decided on a price. But like many sellers, oftentimes there's things that they needed to do on their end just in order to get the home ready and to really get ready to list and be on the market for sale. Well, that took a little bit of time. It was probably about 60 days from that conversation they had in April. And guess what happened? The market pivoted. Suddenly that subtle shift reduced the amount that they could actually go on to the market for. But what ended up happening is because the conversation happened in April and there wasn't any conversation about or expectation setting about the market shifting and maybe needing to evaluate pricing two months later when they went on the market, they pushed their price and they went up on their April pricing. And they ended up having to do a price reduction in July to get to where they needed to be given that market. Now, that uh, what was great is in talking with that agent, she recognized, and we had this conversation about had she set the expectation in April that the price she was giving them was for that market and that they might need to reassess pricing when they actually get on the MLS, that would have uh, reduced some of the frustration. So think about it. When you're having conversations, setting expectations at the onset and making sure that clients know that the market is real time and things can change.
So important, such a great story to tell. You can share that story if you don't have your own story, because that's super indicative of how to set expectations. But more importantly, a cautionary tale you can share with your sellers. So let's talk about our markets real quick to wrap. We know that every market is different, right? We need to highlight that each market, each price point, each micro market, hyper locally is very different from each other. And at the end of the day, we need to be students of the market. We need to be able to highlight when we're setting expectations, when we're telling stories, and when we're pulling data, we need to be able to differentiate between those markets and have stories for each because the experience of buyers and sellers in each one of those markets is going to be different. The supply and demand, the month supply of inventory, days on market, all of these things are going to be different based on price point. And you want to be able to share information that's relevant to your seller and their situation. This past weekend, I talked with multiple agents, three specifically that each shared a different story with me. And it indicates exactly what we're talking about with these different hyperlocal markets. In the high upper end, there was a property that hasn't yet gone on, uh, on the market yet. It's not yet on the MLS, but the agent was doing a great job of creating buzz in advance, multiple offers before it hit the market. In the middle market, there was an agent who put it on the market. They felt like they actually underpriced it in order to create buzz. And unfortunately, what happened? Crickets. Nothing showed up over the weekend. A couple of showings, not a lot of interest, not a lot of activity. And then in the lower market. And remember, do not apply these stories to your situation because your market's different. But in the lower market, again, there was a multiple offer situation that developed. The property hit the market last Thursday. And over the weekend, busy, lots of showings, lots of activity. Three very different experiences for those sellers. And with that, make sure that we do take the time when we're pricing to understand what's happening in the hyper-local market and not looking at the macro necessarily because it can all be different. That is a wrap. We talked about a couple of things today, communication. We talked about also using data, but storytelling. We talked about setting expectations early. Thanks everyone for joining us. Make it a wonderful Tuesday. Stay caffeinated team. We'll see you next week.